Two days before the tour kicks off yes. in Brighton, how are you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. I'm a little tired. Is that because of the jet lag? You just arrived in the UK. No, no, no. I was at a party at Boris Johnson's house. Oh, of so course. That, that's it. Yes, yes, it's good. <laughs> but he got fined. It's all good. It's all good. No, it's all fine now. <laughs> all fine now. No complaints. No, it's actually, uh, it's great. I'm excited to be back in the UK again. I was just in um, Canada and Brazil, so I'm happy that people here understand me, uh, understand <laughs> the language, and, and also just to get to work again. You know, after a year and a half of being, we've all been in this crazy place. So to be back performing again is, is an amazing opportunity. Well, I was going to ask because, you know, the pandemic was a really tough time for everybody, but yeah. for performers, you know, you weren't able to do the thing that makes you you. You weren't Agreed. able to get on stage. How, how was that for you? Well, I would get drunk and wear a wig and walk around my house. My dogs hate me at this point. <laughs> but um, it was one of those things where you're trying to find your way and trying to find your path. And, and so in the end, when they were like, we're ready to go back into the world, I was like, let's do this. Let's get excited and mm. let's go and, and experience it. And I even had a great time in America, which is scary because, you know, American audiences are not always that entertaining because they don't have health care. So uh, <laughs> they were they were they were ready to have an audience, uh, ready to have a performer, and, and I was ready to have an audience. So Absolutely. no complaints. Well, <clears throat> unsanitized yeah. is the name of the tour. Is that a little nod to the pandemic? Or? Oh, everything. And also, <laughs> I'm unsanitized. I mean, the fact that uh, you know, the, the goal was to let people know in advance that I could be problematic, but also amusing. So that's that's where it is. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. You're known for your frankness, your bluntness. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. quite shocking humor. Um, we hear a lot in comedy about yeah. cancel culture and how it relates to comedy. Do you, have you ever stopped yourself saying a joke because it might be offensive? No, I'm a joke. Look at me. You know, it's one of those things. I, I look forward to entertaining people and also just saying that, you know, I'm a joke. Everyone should laugh. And, and that's what I think we've learned from the pandemic is that sometimes you have to find the humor in all of it. I mean, that's mo most important. You know, you have to laugh at it and enjoy it unless you're Will Smith. And then that's a whole nother story. Mm -hmm. Oh, girl. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it, how do you find that line of of doing some doing shocking jokes but yeah. not offensive jokes what's that line well I, I think that uh, the line is not necessarily about a joke but it's also finding the truth in it and mm. I think anything that's truthful is usually funny and as I said before I'm a man in a wig I'm a 46 year old man in a wig that you have to find the humor in it so I hope that people when they come to the show they at least for an hour and a half enjoy the fact that we're there laughing at ourselves I'm laughing at me and, and that's what it is you Absolutely. know Absolutely. well you've got some special guests joining you on the tour tell us about them who they are what they do well two amazing friends of mine. I have uh, Miss Myra Dubois, you might know from uh, Britain's Got Talent, mm -hmm. and also my friend Mary Mack, who's another friend of mine that I've, I've enjoyed for many, many years, um, that now we have this opportunity. They're my supporting act, as they say here <laughs> in, in, in Britain. Uh, they're my supporting act, so they open for me, which is great because they kind of test the mood and get the audience going before I come out. So they're amazing and lovely, and one, uh, Myra's doing the 13th uh, of May, and uh, Mary will be doing the 14th of May. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, you know, you talk about the show a little bit there. So yeah. what can we expect to see when you come out? Is it all comedy? Yes. Is music? What is it? I think well, it's all comedy. And I always say this, you know, expect the unexpected because I never know what's going to happen. It depends on how much I drink. As I said <laughs> last night, I was at Boris's house. So uh, <laughs> I've had some time. But it, it's the thing is that um, you go into the moment and you experience what it is. And obviously partial moments of the show is scripted, but kind of open to all opportunities. That's what it's about. And is there a huge amount of audience involvement? Always. This is what we like. Well, we have to now. We have to now, especially since the pandemic, as I said. It, it's finding out, for me in particular, I always talk to the people in the front row because I go, how much money did you make during the pandemic to afford this seat? Let's <laughs> talk, you know? Uh, because a lot of us weren't working, so mm -hmm. I often ask, what's going on with you and how did you get to this point? And why would you choose to sit this close to me? <laughs> well, you know, you mentioned a uh, UK audiences, US audiences yeah. there. What's the big difference? Three drinks. Three <laughs> drinks and we're all laughing at the same stuff, which is good. Uh, so, no, I enjoy it. And I have to say that the, the Brits get me. They have mm. the same sixth sense of humor, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> uh, and as I said, uh, being in Canada and being in Brazil right now, I'm very happy to be a place where they understand me and they know what's going on. So yeah. I'm looking forward to the UK audiences. They've always been good to me. They've always been good. Well, you added an extra London date. Yes. 
is is that your experiences of London audiences that they're so that they always really want to see you when you're here? Well, I'm not mad. You know, I mean, <laughs> listen, anybody that wants to see me, period, look at me. Uh, but I'm no, I'm beyond grateful, and and you know, now we're in our second night, so I'm I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's that type of thing where, as I said before, the audiences have been wanting to have a show and wanting to see people, and I, I'm ready to deliver. Mm. That's what it is. Happy to be out of my house, and although I'm dressed like I'm in my house today. <laughs> yeah, I know. I should have worn my pajamas. <laughs> Honey, this is comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> and the um, your performing at the Hammersmith Apollo. Yes. Amazing location. Have you been there before? I have been many times. It, it's scary. The only thing I know now uh, with travel is I know airports and I know dressing rooms. So I've been <laughs> to the dressing room and I've been to the airport here. So I, I'm good. What's the dressing room like at the Apollo? It's not bad. It's not, it's bad. not bad? No, it's not Spacious, bad. Spacious? Good. Yeah, it's good. I, I like a little room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you, I mean, you've performed all over the capital. You've yeah. performed everywhere. What's been one of your favorite or most iconic locations? Oh my god, well um, uh, Wembley was was pretty amazing and, and I gotta say in America, Carnegie Hall, not too bad, not too bad um, but th the idea is that also uh, you know, I'm grateful anytime there's an audience mm -hmm. and uh, as I was saying before that with the past few years, it's just amazing to get back out again and to have that audience and to have people that are interested in seeing you so I'm a very lucky, I, I will perform at a gas station, I will perform <laughs> at what well, petrol station, that we call it right, petrol uh, I will be any place I could go and as long as somebody's interested in seeing me, I'm happy. Do you still feel nervousness when you get out on stage? Because you've been doing this for, for a long time. Uh, Do you I still have. feel that? You just called me old, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I said it, I thought, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> no, I'm old. No, um, no, I've been doing drag now 26 years, which is kind of crazy. But um, you do get anxiety for a minute, but, but it's probably my safest and happiest place is to be on stage. That's the best part about it. So I have no complaints. Yeah. Yeah. And if we go back, you know, when did you start drag and why? <gasps> I ask myself myself that every day. <laughs> uh, often people ask me, they say, uh, do you have any tips or any career advice? I go, don't do it. It's a trap. <laughs> so I didn't plan it, but it was one of those things where it just kind of evolved. You know, mm -hmm. I was an actor in theater and then it led to doing drag and it snowballed and mm -hmm. here I am, which is crazy. You Absolutely know? amazing. Yeah. And of course, you're known for winning the iconic six series, series of Drag Race. Back when it was good, yeah, <laughs> season six, yeah. I mean, now there's like 14,000 seasons and, and so many different and versions. And they go on for 14,000 years. Oh, tell me about <laughs> it, tell me about it. But how lucky, um, it's an amazing platform, and I make many jokes about the show, but in the end, it's like how lucky to have this platform. And as you said, um, for me, it's now nine years, nine years since we filmed it, because we filmed mm -hmm. it in 2013. So to have these opportunities, to get to travel the world, I'm beyond grateful for the show and for the opportunity, what an amazing platform. Mm. Do you think that because of the popularity of Drag Race, mm -hmm. that there's uh, sometimes a little trap maybe that people think that drag is just Drag Race? Agreed, agreed. Uh, it can be tricky uh, to most people, but as I said, I'd done drag uh, for 26 years, and it's not your whole life, but it was an amazing portion of my life. Mm. And I think that um, drag is different for each person. You know, uh, when people say, these are the rules of drag, there are no rules. You know, mm. do what you want. People often ask me, you know, should I do drag or is it okay if I do whatever makes you happy if a wig makes you happy go and do it you yeah. know and that's what it's about and I do think that we're possibly seeing a bigger diversity in the drag scene yes. now than ever before would you agree with that yes and I, I think I think whatever whatever brings you joy will mm -hmm. bring someone else joy I often say you know find yourself as I sit here in a wig uh, find yourself and be who you are but um, it, it's an extension of me and I've, I've been grateful to get to do this for this many years absolutely well the London audiences love you I am not mad I'm not <laughs> mad and I'm excited to be back here in the UK once again I have to say I'm, I'm a very lucky clown yeah we can't <laughs> wait for your tour and I think you know I think I know the answer to this question but finally you know there is a Drag Race winner season announced yes four I think out of the eight original season winners are doing it you're not doing it. I'm not Would doing you it. ever do one again? Um, no, I often say, and this is, it, it's nothing grand, but I go, it's been an amazing platform, but I go, would you go back to high school? I'm good, <laughs> I'm good. I had a great time, I came out unscathed. Yes. And also, I, I've, I've gotten everything that I wanted out of totally. this, which is to get to work. And and so, for it, I enjoy it. And and we did discuss it, uh, but uh, it was never uh, for me. You yeah. know, at this point, I go, I'm lucky, I'm grateful to work, and you know I'm not gonna cancel the show. So I was like, I've gotta go and, and do what I do. Yeah. So beyond grateful.